Hey everyone, Dukin is here with a video focused on being what I like to call a raid captain. We all have friends who are casual Destiny players, but they sort of lean on us to hit max late through the raid. There are also players who generally focus on the Crucible and they don't bother mastering the raid. And of course, we all have friends who no matter how hard they try, they suck, but we love them and we help them anyway because they're our buddies. No matter what groups the players you play with fall in, there are most likely people on your friends list who need your best performance to successfully complete the raid. There are things you can do in the Axis fight to cover for weaker or less experienced teammates. That's what this video is about. How you can be the player that people depend on. The person that can make an immediate impact on any raid team. We're going to look at examples about taking the burden off your team to help them perform their jobs and how to pick up the slack when someone makes a mistake. Even if you aren't a raid captain or don't wish to be one, there are still some takeaways in this video that might make your runs go smoother, so I would still encourage you to watch. Just before we kick this off, I want to put a small disclaimer in. There are going to be points I make where you'll think, oh, I should do that no matter who I'm playing with. But there are also times where you'll think, uh, maybe I'll only do that if I'm playing with less experienced guys. The reason being, if you're playing with a solid team who is efficient with the call-outs and mechanics, I suggest playing your position only. The raid works best when everyone pulls their own weight. If you try and be a hero for a team that doesn't need one, you're going to hurt more than you help. If you're playing with new raiders who are trying to improve, you should focus on teaching them instead of doing the work for them. So be a teammate or a Sherpa first. But if you find yourself in one of the situations I already discussed, where your group wants someone that can be an absolute monster, that's when I would execute everything I talk about instead of bits and pieces. I'm going to take you through my checklist during the Servitors and Empowerment phase to explain how I make things go smoother. The strongest player should be the one who takes up the captain on the left or the right because killing the first captain is the job that carries the most risk. So if you're the team leader, that should be your role. You should then use the cannon you get from that captain to take out the captain in the middle. This is because the middle is the most dangerous area and the cause of the most deaths, so you're avoiding people spending too much time down there by effortlessly one-tapping that captain. After I kill the middle captain, I then move to the opposite side in case they need help with their captain. Also, remember that landing on the other side puts you in the middle of the two doors that your servitor will come from. I sometimes see cannon users waiting for their servitor at the door or hiding while waiting. Another thing they might do is take cover after their servitor is down while they wait for their teammates to throw the SIVA bombs. As a captain, you should always be doing something to contribute to the team. So as soon as the captains are down, I drop my cannon temporarily and whip up my P, primary weapon, and shoot any shanks that are alive. Even if your team is diligent in clearing shanks, there are often stragglers or ones that slip through the cracks. While you wait for your servitor to come out, or after you've taken out your servitor, Clearing these shanks reduces the chances of your teammates dying or having their SIVA throws blocked, which obviously contributes to a smoother run. Every guide ever written about the Axis fight encourages players to always keep cover between them and Axis. This is because he launches SIVA clusters when he has a line on you. I'm about to tell you to do the exact opposite of that. So think about it. There are six people in the raid. All of these players have a job to do. They're looking for servitors, they're retrieving and throwing SIVA bombs, and they're scrambling to get to the correct position if they're empowered. With everyone moving around, let me guarantee you there is not one second that everyone is hidden from Axis at the same time. This means that someone is getting hammered by his attacks. If your captain is down, and your servitor is down, and the shanks are down, you're waiting on your team to finish their jobs. So you should take Axis' attention away from your teammates. Stand right in the open and unload a clip of primary like I'm doing right here. If you aren't doing anything else, you may as well dodge his attacks and leave your teammates free to take care of their jobs. This leaves your throwers wide open to hit access quickly and accurately, which helps create a smoother run. At some point during the time where I'm taking out shanks and distracting access, I like to make sure my empowered players are spread out correctly. In my experience, we've typically left the positions up to the empowered team, meaning it's those three players' responsibility to figure things out. However, things go wrong. Sometimes people get overwhelmed and they forget their spot, sometimes people mishear each other, sometimes people don't even realize they're empowered. Things can go wrong. So by saying something as simple as empowerment check, as the sequence is getting gradually less hectic, it gives your empowered team the opportunity to double check their position and work out any discrepancies. If you don't want to cause any extra chatter on the mic, you can just do a visual check to make sure there's a blue guardian in each position. Nothing is worse than missing a slam, since this wastes an entire damage phase, so I put a lot of emphasis on it. So we talked about how you can help your team complete their jobs and avoid dying. Given that we're talking about raiding, and things are sure to go wrong from time to time, let's talk a little about how you can recover when someone makes a mistake. A good captain knows how to compensate for their team's mistakes and weaknesses. Since the margin of error in raids can be very small, you need to be able to react on a dime. This starts by knowing all of your fire team members and their positions. The first thing I do when we land in the Axis fight is I assign my guys to positions. I like telling people where to go because it helps me remember where everyone is, which allows me to quickly make a new plan of action when something goes wrong. 
There are a lot of good players that can perform well in the raid under the right circumstances, but when something doesn't go according to the book, they may not be able to adjust fast enough. Having that one person call out the change in plans is efficient and results in less chatter. For your team, it's easier for someone to react if you can quickly tell them how their job changes. Let's talk about some examples so you know what I mean. Most teams run two people left, two people mid, and two people on the right, with one person throwing the SIVA bomb and one person shooting the servitor in each position. Let's say the thrower on the left dies. Ideally, if everyone knows the position of their teammates, the player throwing center would know they need to go left after throwing center to throw the left SIVA bomb as well. Given that this isn't always obvious in the heat of the moment, there are two things you can do. If I have faith in my center thrower, I'll wait for a pause on the mic and I'll tell them to throw a second SIVA bomb after they throw their own. The other thing you can do when a thrower dies is the same thing you would do when a cannon user dies. It's actually my preferred method of recovery and it's the clip you're watching right now. Since I'm already on my way to the left side to shoot my servitor, I'll tell the left cannon user not to pick up his cannon. I'll shoot two servitors with the two different cannons. The player that normally uses the cannon on the left will throw instead of shoot their cannon since I've now shot for them. If it's a cannon user that dies, coordinating this is even easier because there's no extra chatter on the mic. You take out two of the three servitors and the throwers throw like they normally would. I simply say I got it and my team knows I'm going to shoot two cannons. Like I mentioned before, you can make that split second decision for your team if you know where everyone is off by heart. Having one player shout it out is much more efficient than five people talking it out together. My empowered players on the left or right cover two positions. By standing between the inside middle and left, or the inside middle and right positions, you can cover both. Most players have the hang of dunking axis by now, but on the off chance they miss, it never hurts if you're there to back them up. Take a look at this clip. There was some confusion between me and the other middle empowered player. We were already behind on callouts, then we both called inside, then we both called outside, and then we ran out of time. I wasn't going to make it to get the slam. But because Biker is a great raid captain, he covered the inside teleport even though he was assigned to the right. For this reason, as a raid captain, I now always make sure I call left or right empowered because that guarantees I'll have a look at inside middle and one of the corners. I understand that this guy does not cover the super discharge mechanic. If your team is struggling enough that you need to go into captain mode, this extra mechanic will only make things worse, so you should avoid it if you aren't with an experienced group. And on the topic of Super Discharge, my next video will both explain and simplify that mechanic for the average player, so definitely subscribe if you want to see that. Let's do a quick recap of what a typical run looks like if a captain is needed on your fire team. You take a corner captain out as fast as possible. Using that cannon, you take out the middle captain. You then rotate to the opposite side in case they need help with their captain. From that side, you take out your respective servitor. You fire a couple shots at Axis to keep him off your team. While you wait for your throwers to hit Axis, you take out any leftover shanks and make sure your empowered team has every teleportation covered. If a thrower dies, you call his cannon user off and shoot two cannons, or ask the closest thrower to throw twice. If a cannon user dies, you tell your team you got it and you shoot two servitors. If you're empowered, you make sure you're on a corner so you can cover that corner and inside middle. And lastly, and most importantly, do not be a raid captain unless your team both wants and needs one. If you force yourself onto people, you're going to be that guy in the front of the class that never puts his hand down, which nobody likes. So make sure it's warranted first. If you're not familiar with my channel, I recommend you follow the link in the description and head over to subscribe since I have a few more access videos in the works, including the supercharge mechanic. Other than that, let me know if I messed anything up that was said, or you have a better way of doing something I mentioned, or maybe you have an entirely other way to be a raid captain. I'd love to hear your feedback, and I'll see you guys in the comments. Duking us out.